project is to look at these new technologies which provide ways of intervening in the brain. And the technologies that we're interested in are neurostimulation, brain-computer interfaces, and the use of neural stem cells. These technologies are being introduced because they provide new kinds of treatment for mental disorders, such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and serious depression. The reason that we're interested in them is that because they involve intervening in the brain, they give rise to new problems, partly because the results of these interventions are not yet fully explored, and partly because in some cases they seem to give rise to significant changes in the personality of people who are treated by them. What we want to do in this working party is to gather evidence about these new treatments, and for this reason we're going out to consultation both with patients and patient groups, and what we want to do is to hear from as many of you as possible about the benefits and the risks of these new technologies. Transcranial magnetic stimulation is a technology where you use a magnetic coil and put it next to somebody's head to modulate their brain activity. And this is used to treat depression currently, but there's also research ongoing to use it for pain disorders such as migraine, for obsessive compulsive disorders, and for some other things. And researchers are also looking into the option of human enhancement. So, um, to improve learning or memory or to make you better at math, for example. Deep brain stimulation is a technology where an electrode is actually implanted into the brain and connected to a little battery pack that's placed in the chest. So, this requires brain surgery. And deep brain stimulation is used in the UK and elsewhere to treat severe cases of Parkinson's disease and neurological um, movement disorders but there is currently research ongoing to use it for a wide number of disorders such as obsessive compulsive disorder, again, depression, major depression, and some, some other things. Neural stem cell therapy means that stem cells are injected into the brain during brain surgery. Stem cells can develop into any type of cell in the body, and so in this case the expectation is that they will develop into brain cells that have been lost, um, for example, after a stroke, or due to dementia. This is currently an experimental treatment and so there is rather little data available on how safe this will be and how effective this treatment could be. Uh, and also we don't know yet whether there are side effects or some long-term effects such as, for example, unwanted behaviour or personality changes. I think the most common brain-computer interface consists of a cap with lots of electrodes in it that pick up brain signals from the outside. So they're fairly general signals, but that can be used to allow the person to learn to think in certain ways to control a little robot vehicle, or perhaps more recently, somebody's driving a skateboard around with it. That sort of thing. Now this is very, very useful. Eight times out of ten, the vehicle will go where they want. Twice out of ten, not. So it's not so good, perhaps, for fail-safe, but it is quite useful for basic control. It can also be used, the same technology, to find out which regions of the brain are active when someone has epilepsy. So there's possibilities in the therapeutic area as well. So, what I've got here is a brain gate system. This is also referred to as the Utah Array. Um, what it is, is actually 100 electrodes. And this was fired into my nervous system for an experiment. And what it did when we linked my nervous system via this array to, for example, the robot hand. So as I moved my hand, my brain signals were transmitted via the computer out to the robot hand so that the robot hand mimicked my hand movements. So effectively, my brain was not only controlling my hand, but was also controlling the robot hand. Now clearly that's useful for somebody that's had their hand amputated that we can connect on an artificial hand that they can control from their brain.